Well, good morning, everybody on Facebook. The time right now is 1115 in the morning. Of course, like I've always reiterated, if friends and family, both the North and South Carolina, aren't going to get a chance to watch this live, make sure you share this with them so they have the latest information because the National Hurricane Center just came up with the latest information on Hurricane Florence about 15 minutes ago. And officially, we now have a major hurricane again. Latest information from the National Hurricane Center. Hurricane Florence is now a Category 3 hurricane, wind sustained at 115 miles an hour, gusting to 140. It's picking up its forward motion now at 13 miles an hour. But here's the thing, it is now moving west at 13 miles an hour. A very, very well-defined hurricane. It's not a very large one, nevertheless, but still, it is a major hurricane, and we continue to watch a very well-developed eye, and the eye is growing. The eye itself, from one end to the other, is at about 35 miles wide, indicative of it strengthening significantly, and you can see all the thunderstorm activity just significantly wrapping around it. Now, the latest track from the National Hurricane Center, it may very likely will be a Category 4 hurricane by later on this evening with winds at about 130 miles an hour and continue as a four for the next several days. In fact, it's still forecasted that we may have wind speeds as a category four by Tuesday night of 150 miles an hour at times possibly gusting to 185 and the track continues heading towards the Carolinas. Now the track hasn't deviated by much. The one noticeable thing is that the timing now looks like it may be making landfall sometime around Thursday midnight into early Friday morning, potentially as either a very low end category four or a very high end category three hurricane. What does that mean? We could be looking at wind speeds at landfall in the, around the center of the circulation as potentially about 125 to 130 mile an hour sustained winds. But notice the cone of uncertainty at the time of landfall still makes it as far east as the outer banks of North Carolina to possibly Elizabeth City all the way to Wilmington. The western extension though still does cover most of the South Carolina coastline as far down as the southern tip of Charleston County. Here's the one thing to take home. The track still remains the same. The cone of uncertainty still stays the same. So we cannot be under, we still have to stay under guard right now for the potential of this storm. Now the latest computer spaghetti models from a lot of the tropical models still indicate that it will be headed towards North Carolina. But here's a noticeable thing. A couple of the hurricane guidance models specifically from the National Hurricane Center, now do indicate a possible landfall more towards the South Carolina coastline of Ori or Georgetown County. And the European models are now starting to trend towards it. Officially, this does not mean it's going to make landfall in North Carolina. It still may make landfall either in North or South Carolina. No doubt the winds are going to be the thing. Tropical storm winds, of excess of 39 miles or plus are going to be definite all throughout the state of North Carolina. But for South Carolina, the indication still is we could be dealing with sustained tropical force winds of 39 plus to gale force winds of 50 mile an hour plus from pretty much from Rock Hill to Columbia to Charleston and everything east. And the further east you go towards the North and South Carolina Piedmont to the outer, uh, to the uh, Grand Strand of uh, Myrtle Beach, the winds will very likely be at least 39 to 50 miles an hour sustained. And we're talking about wind speeds in tropical storm force, very likely for an extended 12 to 18 miles, uh, 12 to 18 hours. Now, the computer guidance models of the GFS still indicate that very heavy rainfall is expected from the outer banks of North Carolina, pushing all the way into as far north as the Virginia line to just east of Raleigh-Durham. This white can't indicate of how much it is, but all indications, we may be looking at 18 to 20 inches of rainfall. This does not account for storm surge. That's just rainfall alone. Now, the computer model indicating for the entire southeastern seaboard, we can be looking at that rainfall of 20 to 24 inches of rainfall pushing along the Virginia, North Carolina border all the way up to Richmond, Virginia, the Outer Banks move, moving into areas close to Greensboro, North Carolina, and then all the way down to Wilmington and everything in between. 
We are expecting rainfall in South Carolina, but right now, I honestly believe as long as the track stays where it is, that we're going to be looking at two to three to four inches localized five along the north and south carolina border in the palmetto state that's the amount of rainfall but here's the one thing that we're watching very carefully about the amount of rainfall the computer models and a lot of the guidance and notice that the landfall is probably friday early early friday morning the position that this track of the national hurricane center puts it around fayetteville north carolina Friday morning at 8 a.m. with landfall probably by Thursday midnight into early Friday morning. But notice here, this is Friday morning. This is Saturday morning. It hasn't moved that much as far as the deviation in distance. There is a very, very likelihood, regardless of which model is right or not, whether it moves into the Greensboro area or whether it moves into the Elizabeth City area. By Friday and into the weekend, all models are indicating that Hurricane Florence, once it starts weakening, will actually get trapped on the east side of the Appalachians and sit there possibly into Sunday. And with that said, we're looking at continuous heavy rainfall, not only during landfall on Thursday and Friday morning, but possibly into Saturday and Sunday. This computer model guidance is indicating that everything east of the line is going to be experiencing possibly two feet of rainfall in a 72 hour period. It is very worthy to note that that track, if this track, as it, if it shifts further west, wherever you are east of that main line in that cone of uncertainty, that's where the heaviest rainfall is going to be. So don't pay attention so much of the center line, but more so of the entire eastern quadrant of where Hurricane Florence make landfall, because that's where the heaviest rainfall is going to be. And in addition to that, the further away you are from the center point of Hurricane Florence, the very likely you're going to be dealing with severe weather in the form of severe thunderstorms and tornadic activity. Officially right now, there are no watches or warnings in effect for tropical storm or hurricane for anywhere in South Carolina and for that matter, the entire southeastern seaboard. However, I confidently can say, if not by tomorrow midday, by as early as tomorrow morning, the National Hurricane Center will probably start issuing tropical storm and hurricane watches and warnings for somewhere from Virginia all the way down to South Carolina, including North Carolina. Where it's going to be, that is yet to be determined. The National Hurricane Center has not indicated where and how they're going to be placing it, but it's something we're going to be watching. One thing is definitely for certain. There is no storm surge watches or warnings. There will be storm surge from the southern tip of Charleston all the way through Folly Beach and the Isle of Palms. We could be looking at storm surge conservatively between three to four feet um, by the time the hurricane starts making its way towards the Carolinas. From Isle of Palms to North Myrtle Beach, we could be looking at storm surge in excess of five to maybe seven to eight feet storm surge. But as you get closer and especially closer and east of where the landfall is going to be, I certainly expect where we're going to have storm surges along the North Carolina coastline in excess of eight feet plus. Now, Governor Roy Scott has already issued a mandatory evacuation for the outer banks of North Carolina. That is, that is what Governor Scott is doing. We have not gotten any watches or warning for South Carolina, let alone any evacuation orders. So let me say that again. We do not have any evacuation orders anywhere for South Carolina. Governor Henry McMaster will be uh, having a press conference later on today and explain exactly what's going on with the operation conditions of emergency management. But again, this is a lot that we're going to be watching. So just to reiterate, the National Hurricane Center now has Hurricane Florence as a Category 3 major hurricane with wind speeds at 115, gusting to 140 miles an hour, and a very well-defined hurricane as it continues to move to the west at 13 miles an hour and the track does have it staying as a major hurricane right through Friday after uh, Thursday afternoon with the possibility of landfall anywhere in North or South Carolina potentially as strong as a category three 
to a Category 4 hurricane by sometime late Thursday overnight into early Friday morning. We'll continue to update and monitor the information, and we'll continue to get that information. The next update from the National Hurricane Center will be 5 o'clock this afternoon. Until then, we'll have a lot more on this on News 19 at noon and as well on Facebook, on Twitter, and on WLTX.com. Stay safe, everyone. We'll have more information coming up later on today.